clam chowder, anyone? Because I haven't touched this one in a while, it has opened up for me. Take that opportunity now. <gasps> it's shut right up. That's my tease. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. Hello everyone, welcome back to my home. It's actually really great that you're here today because we have a miserable rainy fall afternoon in NYC. So let's cook something out of the original Boston Cooking School cookbook from 1896. It's from Fanny Farmer. This is where my brain went today when I was trying to figure out what to make. I'm looking at the cover of this old school cookbook and I'm, you know, there's a soup on there or there's a chowder or something like that. Okay, the wheels are turning. I look up here, it says Boston. Boston's in New England. I was like, ah, oh, does Fanny have a New England clam chowder recipe? That would certainly fit the season right now. Of course she does. And unlike Julia Child, she doesn't go into like a story time or a description about the recipes. You're kind of on your own. We got a New England clam chowder. That's what's in this cookbook because it has milk in it. There is also a Manhattan clam chowder, shout out. That one has tomatoes instead of milk. There's also a Rhode Island clam chowder. That one contains neither. It's like a clear broth to it. The more you know. Anyway, I've only had clam chowder once before in my entire life. So Fanny, show me the way. We got our clams here. It's a big sack of them. Now I've worked with shellfish before with, them, with mussels with oysters, but never with clams. And these are considered little neck clams. And um, I had to look up, colander me, thank you. I had to look up, uh, you gotta be gentle with them. They're still alive, you numbskull. Rinsing them off would be a wise idea because they are kind of covered in something. Where's that oyster knife? So there is a hinge right there. And if I turn it the other way, there should be somewhere here for me to kind of insert the knife. Ow. I have not the slightest idea how you open these. I mean, I looked it up online. I have a general idea, but when you're holding one in your hand, you're just like, what the hell? I think right there. The knife's sideways and it's not really sharp, so I'm not worried about cutting my hand, don't worry. Yeah, I don't know how. I got the knife in. I gotta keep it in there. Ugh, losing all that precious clam juice. Don't do that, man. You keep the knife in there. Maybe, this is the test, okay? It's my first time ever doing this. Okay, honestly, that looks like a lot of work. So let's thank this episode's sponsor, Blue Land. They are an innovative cleanser for a wash without the waste. And you know me. I just don't make messes. I'm all in with the messes. And it does leave me with a lot of single use plastic guilt. You know, I have these cleaners here and you use them, they run out, and then you're left with nothing but this useless plastic that's far gonna outlive me. Outlive me, I am Canadian. And then it'll end up in like the ocean or somewhere, you don't know where it's going. So I'm always trying to find a way to reduce my plastic use as best as I can. And it is tough, it is, it is. Fill your forever bottle with warm water, take the refillable nickel-sized tablet, in it goes, no shaking, no stirring, and in a few minutes, now I'm cleaning my kitchen. You. The glass. My hands. The bathroom. I'm not showing you my bathroom. Blue Land uses no single use plastic in any of their components and all refills are 100% plastic free. And when you buy the bottle, you use it forever. So make sure to check out Blue Land by clicking the link down below and get 15% off your first kit. Thank you Blue Land for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna get back to work. This is gonna take a very long time. I totally thought it was gonna be easier to open all these clams. Uh, I got that like overwhelming feeling right now where I'm like, what have I signed up for? Uh, I guess I could watch some more videos or something. Easiest way to open a clam. I've already watched that video. I actually think I got one. I got one. I got one. So the clam juice can just fall into here. Yes. And I'm just gonna take all that's in the shell there. 
Okay, we got one. Hallelujah. So the hinge is against my thumb, or at least facing downward. I'm in there, I'm in there. And welcome. I honestly thought that me learning how to shuck an oyster would just translate over to this. Round side down, lean the wider side against the table, cover with the towel, jam your knife through till you hear a pop. Uh, yeah, I was ignorant. I was oblivious, I was a fool. Uh, because it's just not working. And I have an oyster shucking knife, but now I realize that there's a clam shucking knife that is kind of in between a paring knife and this. So it's only sharp on one end. Luckily, this, this knife here isn't very sharp, so you can lean your finger against it and try to open up the shell. Uh, but it's still kind of useless too. This cheap paring knife, I've been kind of bouncing between both of these, um, neither are really working. And I know New York is the city where you can really get anything at any time of day. Uh, but right now, I don't know where to get a clam shucking knife. I mean, at this time of day. So, we got a problem, we got a big problem. Oh, maybe not though. Oh, wait a minute. If I just leave these, Okay, I just had a major breakthrough in an idea here. I'm pretending like the, the clams don't know I'm here right now. I'm not jostling them around. When they start to relax, the shells open a little bit. And then that's when I pounce. Oh, victory is sweet. It's draining the juice into here. And then I gotta cut everything that is sticking to the shell there, the connectors. <laughs> it's the technical term for it, it's the connector. Kind of scrape that all off from the shell on both sides, and that sucker should just nearly slide out, right? Ah, off you go. That's how we're gonna do it. Here we go. Y'all ready? In it goes, see? How she's referring to the clam juice is as liquor. Reserve the liquor which I totally am doing, and remove that muscle, the meat. Really don't think I am at that level where I should be teaching anyone how to open up a clam. So I'm just gonna do it my way. Got it, got it. I have some clams hanging out in cold water, just in case they open over there. And then I got my eye over here too. So yeah, we're busy. And I can wait. Oh, I can wait. Got it. Got it. This method isn't perfect. I use a small knife like that. I put it against the opening. I can fit it here. I go and I close right in. And as you see this one, the thing broke. I'm watching this video from Jacques Pepin. Everyone loves Jacques Pepin. His way of teaching how to open these damn clams has been the most helpful so far. He just straight up says he uses a paring knife. He just puts it against the opening and he slides the knife right in. But being careful not to cut your hand off. Oh yeah, you son of a... Victory, that's how you do it. Drain the juice, take the muscle off the shell. Keep the good times rolling. Brilliant. There goes the liquor, and it will just slide right in. Oh yeah. Then I switch to the oyster knife to remove the, the meat from the shell, just kind of cut underneath the muscle. Off you go, even the tough bits go in. Okay, the remaining ones here are being very, very stubborn. So Jacques Pepin says to put these in the freezer for like 10 minutes. Might shock them enough to that might do the trick. I'm so freaking determined to get this done. You are the most stubborn of all. Uh, me and this final muscle are in a heavy game of, a game of wits. And I'm gonna get you. You, final clam, were a worthy opponent. 
But unfortunately, just like the other 49 before you, 48, there was one that was, uh, was empty. Uh, you have met your demise. You will end up in the chowder with the rest of them. So here's the dilio. I've been toying around with this for probably, uh, I don't know, over two hours, maybe almost closer to three. I can't really keep these opened clams out of their shell in the fridge up to three days. Great. So that means, well, I mean, I've already made up my mind. I'm not making this chowder tonight. No interest. I've ordered tacos. They'll be delivered right to my door. Hello. Awesome. Send them up. Thank you. Okay. Mm. It's a well-earned taco. Went to bed last night, not thinking about those clams once. And I've woken up refreshed and well, I now have a hankering for some clam chowder. So yeah, let's get this done. I have my clams here. Quart of clams, that's all she says. Well, this is half a quart. It's two cups worth, 500 milliliters. I'm gonna half the recipe. That's no problem, because I was gonna be making nine cups worth of clam chowder, and I think if I make enough for a couple nice bowls of it, for me, I'll be happy as a clam. Happy as a clam. Okay, so before I tend to the clams, let's just keep those in a bowl filled with ice here. Keep it chilled. Firstly, potatoes. I got two russets. I'm gonna peel and dice. Three quarter inch dice. One onion. Slice up the onion. Gotcha. Well, I'll determine what I want those slices to look like. You know, something that would be pleasant in a stew. It's chowder. In a chowder. Salt pork. You can see the skin, the fat, the meat. But uh, that's all she says. One and a half inch cube. And I just feel like I need to divide that in half, first of all, because I'm halving the recipe, but also I feel like that's not that much. Chop the pork into small pieces. I'm thinking just adding a little more pork than what she's asking for. Is that a faux pas? I don't know. There you go. So what do I gotta do? <laughs> Reserve the liquor. Right. Okay, I'll just reserve the liquor. Save me. Thank you. So let's reserve the liquor. Oh yeah. We have one and a half cups worth of that. Great. And then I got my clam meat here. Chop finely hard part of clams. What, what is the hard part of the clam? Oh, that's the hard part. That's soft part. Gotcha. Any of the firmer pieces can go over to the left, soft on the right. Run the knife quickly through the other pieces too. I just think it needs it. Okay, it's judgment call. We got everything we need, so let's head over. Let's well, let's go over to the stew. We're here. Uh, what's up? Just a sec. So in this cookbook, she says cut the pork into small pieces and try out. Try out. I don't know that. What? And then she says add the onions, fry five minutes, and strain into a stew pan. Try out. What's that? So let's do this. Whatever that means. I'm just gonna add the pork to the pan. It's gonna start to render out the, the fat, kind of not brown it, but just get it going, you know? Yeah, maybe brown it slightly. And then I'll add the onions. Sweat those out for five minutes. That's how I'm deciphering Fanny's recipe today. Okay, and then over here I got boiling water. I need to parboil my potatoes five minutes. I'm sure bacon would do just fine in this recipe, but she asked for salt pork. So I'm just trying to accommodate all needs right now. I thought there'd be more fat rendered out of that, so I'm gonna add a little hoot of lard. <laughs> my onion. Fry for five minutes. Cook these onions until they are sweating. They're translucent, but not browned. Drain the potatoes. 
and race back here because you gotta stir your onions. All right, off the heat you go. In terms of a saucepan, I'm gonna use this one today because it has a big wide bottom here. Add a layer of potatoes to the bottom of the pan. All right, let's add our clams. This is first the hard part, <laughs> the hard part of the clams. Coming through with the rest of it. She doesn't call for any butter or fat or oil or anything like that at the bottom of the pan. She just says to add the potatoes. It needs something in there. I'm just gonna quickly add a knob of butter in there too. I mean, butter's gonna be added into here anyway. She didn't call for butter, not yet at least. But, you know, you need something in there. Half a tablespoon of salt. And how much pepper? How much pepper? One eighth teaspoon, okay. Check out my big bag of flour, flour. And what I'm gonna do is completely dredge everything that's in here right now with flour. Add in the rest of the potatoes, and a little more salt, and then the pepper. All these ancient words in this book, I got confused. That would totally make sense why I didn't need to add the butter when I did, because I was supposed to add the onions and the pork in first, very first. Ah, uh, it's fine. The butter was gonna go in there anyway, so it's all good. Make sure that everything is dredged in flour. Okay, we need to add in boiling water, halving the recipe, so one and a quarter cup worth. Okay. And a quarter. I'm not gonna be using this guy anymore. Fanny would have used a wooden spoon. Thickened up so fast because of the flour. So I'm turning down the heat and I'm gonna let that simmer for 10 minutes. So during that 10 minutes, I brought this milk up to a boil and then I have let it cool down to, I don't know, now it's kind of like I can stick my finger in there. I would consider that scalded milk as she puts it. And I need two cups worth. Before I add this though, I should uh, admit that I have screwed up for a second time. Uh, I was supposed to add the soft part of the clams now, instead of when I added everything all at once. I just, sometimes I just frustrate myself. So I'm gonna add two cups of milk, another tablespoon of butter. Remember that this is the New England part of the clam chowder. I now she says to reheat the clam liquor Reheat it as if it's ever been heated up before. So I'm just gonna heat it up. So in the cookbook, it says you need eight common crackers divided by two, four common crackers. So, I mean, you can imagine what that would look like, but with clam chowder, you can actually use these, uh, they're called oyster crackers, <laughs> clam crackers, whatever. So I would imagine that common crackers would equal six, six of those give or take. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I love crackers, so I'm gonna soak them in cold milk until they moisten up. The milk has been boiling in here for five minutes. Add these crackers in. It's one tablespoon of softened butter, one tablespoon of flour. Get that into a paste, into the oyster liquor. Whisk that together while it's on the heat. I'm gonna add this clam water in, oh, it's clam water now. Add it to the chowder just before serving. This has a tendency to cause the milk to separate, hence is added at the last. Please don't separate milk. Please don't separate. Let's scoop up some of this chowder. This looks so damn good, it's not even funny. I'm feeling a bit frisky right now. I'm gonna add a couple of crackers on the very top. And just for a little pop of color, some chopped up parsley. Order up! Sublime. More crackers. Mm. Clam, that, just clams. Clams just running through all of this thing. It's nice. Mm. You gotta be easy with the salt on this dish because the salt pork contributes quite a bit to it. I'm thinking just adding a little more pork than what she's asking for. Is that a faux pas? I don't know. That's a classic dish for a reason. I see no faults. I loved every single bite. And I would eat that again and again. Rich, creamy, 
chunky. You got the clam meat in there, the clam juice in there, and everything is just all clammy <laughs> in a great way. You know, it's cooling down outside, it's the fall, and clam chowder really just hits the spot. You gotta love shellfish to enjoy this one. Thankfully, I do, but if you do, then you're gonna think it's sensational. If you don't, then yeah, you don't have it. This was Jamie and Fanny. See you later, bon appetit. Just wanted to tell you um, that the tacos are here.